amidst floods, earthquakes, and war, add your response to world emergencies with solidarity and love. Adventist leaders mobilize in Europe to multiply disciples and establish churches amidst secularization. In a mission of faith, cyclists bring hope to the Shetland Islands without Adventists. These and other incredible news you follow now, live on ANN. Stay tuned. In a world where disasters and conflicts arise without warning, ADRA is present, offering aid to those most in need. On May 11th, the Seventh-day Adventist Church highlighted the Disaster and Famine Relief Offering Sabbath to support ongoing aid efforts worldwide. Global generosity continues to advance ADRA's mission. Emergencies of all kinds have marked recent times, and the humanitarian response of the Adventist NGO makes a difference. In Brazil, Relentless rains caused devastating floods in Rio Grande do Sul, submerging 80% of the region with over 100 deaths and hundreds missing. ADRA responded promptly, bringing relief and resources to those impacted. In Ukraine, after more than 800 days of conflict, civilian casualties exceed 30,000, including more than 10,000 dead. Moreover, the country mourns the loss of about 31,000 soldiers. With millions displaced, including over 6 million refugees, ADRA is offering help and hope to a nation torn apart by war in one of the greatest humanitarian conflicts of our time. It's so different experiencing this in person than just watching the news. The front line is just there and we, we could see the smoke, we could hear the explosions. And uh, after experiencing even, even a little bit of the hard cold reality that the people live in here. It's uh, just <laughs> unbelievable to me that some people just don't care or they think that they don't need to help because the war is still going on and that's why Ukraine needs our strong support. The earthquakes in Turkey and Syria left a devastating toll of over 20,000 deaths. ADRA quickly mobilized resources to assist the victims of these devastating earthquakes as the region struggles to rebuild after the tragedy. Hurricanes have ravaged Mexico, but not the spirit of its people. ADRA reinforces the commitment to recovery and resilience. In India, violent cyclones tested the strength of millions. ADRA was present, offering shelter and vital support to the affected families. In Africa, drought and famine threaten the future putting millions at risk of starvation. The situation is exacerbated by the war in Sudan and severe droughts in countries like Zimbabwe and Zambia. ADRA is combating these crises, providing water and food, sowing hope in arid lands. Beyond these sequences of tragedies, in recent months, a wave of emergencies has spread across the globe. ADRA has provided humanitarian aid to communities facing crises, such as earthquakes in Morocco, Afghanistan and Japan and floods in the Philippines, Malawi and Europe, communities shattered by violence and forced displacement in Venezuela and the Middle East, and furious fires in the forests of Chile. We are truly grateful from the bottom of our hearts for all your generosity. Because of you, we have touched the lives of more than 34 million children, women and individuals around the world. ADRA faces emergencies, working tirelessly to bring light where there is darkness. Join the Adventist Church in this mission of love and compassion, for together we can achieve more. I can't say it will get better, but with you, our impact will be stronger. Together, we'll continue to serve humanity with justice, compassion and love. Thank you for trusting us and keeping ADRA on the move. Thank you. In Somerset, West South Africa, 19 young people dedicated their lives to Christ through baptism. The sacred ceremony marked the culmination of months of Bible study and support by the local Seventh-day Adventist church leaders in educating and inspiring the children and youth to follow Jesus. The 20th of April, 2024 marked a high Sabbath for the Silverleaf Seventh-day Adventist church based in Somerset, West South Africa, about 50 kilometers outside of Cape Town. Families and friends of the church gathered from all over on the campus of the Helderberg College of Higher Education 
a Seventh-day Adventist institution, as 19 young people dedicate their lives to Christ through baptism. The joy expressed by the young people as they seal their commitment to Christ and by those in attendance was palpable. The baptism was the culmination of months of Bible study and support by church leaders and echoes the important role that children's ministries, adventurers, pathfinders, ambassadors and youth ministries play in educating and inspiring our children and youth to follow the path of Christ. Bravo, because of God's great love for you, because of Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross for you, because of the working of the Holy Spirit in your life and your response to Him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Bible is certainly true. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Seventh-day Adventists in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, celebrated the culmination of the Impact 24, Your Journey to Joy, island-wide evangelistic efforts with the praise and worship program that highlighted the more than 100 baptisms reached. Hundreds crowded the Central Adventist Church in Friedrichstadt to sing, pray, and fellowship during the special ceremony. During the two-week evangelistic series, guest evangelists and music ministry leaders from the United States held nightly services at four church locations, representing St. Croix's main districts. The efforts resulted in 105 individuals being baptized, organized by General Conference Treasury leaders in collaboration with the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Inter-American region and Loma Linda University Health. The initiative aimed to spread the gospel and provide community service. Loma Linda University's team offered health care to over 600 residents for four days. Additional activities, including vacation Bible school, youth dialogue sessions, marches, chapel talks, and mural paintings at St. Croix Seventh-day Adventist School also contributed to the community impact. Paul Douglas, General Conference Treasurer, emphasized the importance of mobilizing for mission and working together as a church organization to reach others for Christ. In collaboration with the world-renowned artists, Advent Health is installing artwork along Interstate 4 in Orlando, United States. These aluminum pieces will come to life, conveying messages of hope, gratitude, and healing in a monumental project. It's an exciting day because after several years of diligent work, we're here to start the installation of the artwork on our Innovation Tower garage with the artist Jeff Ray. Advent Health has given me this opportunity here um, to kind of share what art can do to community, what art can do to influence sort of our emotions, to be able to use art as a healing. Well, at Advent Health, we believe that healing doesn't just take place in the walls of our hospitals, but we also heal in our communities. And it's kind of in that spirit that this artwork is gonna be installed on the side of this garage that's right along I-4. What you'll see here for the next 30, 60 days are a series of these origami-shaped aluminum folded cards that are sort of metaphors to greeting cards that are going to be scattered all over the, the facade of the building. It's visible to everyone, and it's gonna be a reflection as it gets installed of the thank yous and cards and notes that our caregivers get and can get. They provide a way of healing uh, and we wanted to give them thanks. And this is more than a public art project, but it's really a thank you to the community and thank you to those who are healing us. In today's Mission 150 episode, we explore the legacy of John N. Andrews, whose missionary journey to Europe in 1874 marked a significant milestone. Discover the remarkable stories of his successors who continued his mission with unwavering dedication and passion. Welcome back to Mission 150. So last week we talked about John N. Andrews and how he finally came to go to Europe and how eventually it cost him his life, serving as a missionary there due to overwork, um, 
pouring all of his money into the work and not into his own nutrition, uh, coming, becoming sick and dying of tuberculosis. Um, but I think this is a good point to start thinking about what happened after Andrews came and also how significant was Andrews coming. Andrews being sent really is a hugely consequential moment because it isn't a false start. In fact, it's just the beginning of a missionary movement. So what other missionaries did they send? So they do send another American missionary to join J. N. Andrews, a man called B. L. Whitney. Um, and fairly soon thereafter, they send a man called Henry P. Holzer. Um, Holzer, inter interestingly, is German-American. So in sending him to Switzerland and work in Germany, they're sending somebody who is culturally aware mm -hmm. and linguistically aware. How, where, how do they fund this? Did they have the tithe and offering system already established or not? They, by this time, they did. Okay. By, by, this, by the mid-1870s, they've got this established, though it's, it, it isn't well established. But is it fair to say that it is precisely because of mission that they had to organize themselves properly financially, or those two are not related? No, I think that's right. Because what they have when they first start is something called systematic benevolence. Mm. SB, as they tend to refer to it just as SB, um, and gradually they work out a doctrine of tithing and offerings. And yes, I think mission is part of the impulse towards working out, going back and looking at the scripture, looking at tithes, and saying you need this is this is God's ten percent. So I think mission it provides an, an impulse to theology in that case and to organization. Challenging secularization in Europe, leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church gathered in Portugal for the last of three training sessions focused on the mission and the opening of new churches adapted to the European context. Participants from various regions discuss tools to understand cultural diversity and mindset trends in Europe. The main challenges that we are having is that we are very focused on ourselves, that we are not open, really open to other people. We try to reach other people, but it's very hard. We are very busy with our programs, we are very busy with our churches and so on. But uh, as soon as we are meeting other people, uh, things get different and we are actually not really ready for them. So, and for other people, for, especially for secular people, it's very difficult to come to our churches because they're facing a totally different world view, a totally different culture. And uh, so uh, sometimes it's really hard to, to, to step in for them. Florian Ristea, the director of the Adventist Mission, Sabbath School, and personal ministry departments in the inter-European region, emphasizes the importance of understanding each community to create effective missionary plans. What we have here in Europe is a huge diversity as I said, from country to country, or sometimes inside the same country, people are thinking different, having a different mindset. And we try to help the, the local church uh, and the missionaries to contextualize these principles and to try to uh, deal with their people uh, using their creativity, their imagination, using social media as an interface of mission. But um, I would say that nothing can replace that human, personal interaction with people. With experience in the Adventist mission in Italy, a country with a strong Catholic tradition and increasing secularization, Maria Rosa Cavalieri, director of the Adventist mission, Sabbath school and personal ministries departments in this country highlights the guidance of the Holy Spirit adapted to each cultural context. In my opinion, the best method is the one that sees the meeting of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to believers in that place. The gift that God has given you with the needs that exist in that territory and the love that you have, the passion that you have for that territory. So there can be different methods. Mario Brito, the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the inter-European region, shared the need for each member to serve and be attentive to cultural diversities, making disciples and opening new churches. Still, when we we'll try to help the others, we'll grow in our relationship with God and with the understanding of the society in which we are. 
what I can offer is the peace of Christ, first of all. When Christ is in us, people feel it, even if they don't express it. And this offer that you are not aware is what will somehow build bridges. And we need to build bridges with people before even we want to offer something concrete. Now we want to share firsthand a wonderful project that was recently completed. Come with me to discover a fascinating place. Get to know its people, their culture, their customs and traditions. Also to see what God is doing in this place. More than 2,000 preaching locations with international speakers, local pastors and volunteer leaders from churches bringing the message of salvation to hundreds of thousands of people. the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting in a way never seen before. Commitment. Decision. Transformation. An entire church that understood the biblical truth, especially about the Sabbath, becomes a Seventh-day Adventist church. After the baptism, the children entered the pool, celebrating and enjoying the refreshing water. The joy of the children is a beautiful metaphor for the joy of heaven over sinners who repent and accept Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Papua New Guinea for Christ, a blessing and inspiration for all of us. Venturing into the heart of the Shetland Islands in Scotland, a bold biking initiative emerges. With not a single Adventist among its 23,000 inhabitants, eight individuals embark on a cycling mission. Their aim, to traverse every corner, sharing the gospel and kindling hope. This is the I Will Go Bike Ride Ministry. We've come to the Shetland Islands. The reason being, there's 23,000 people here and not a single Adventist. We want to reach them with the gospel and we'd love to see them ready for Jesus to return. 
The Shetland Islands are part of Scotland and the northernmost part of the United Kingdom. Anthony Kent, the Associate Ministerial Secretary at the General Conference, put together a small team of pastors from Scotland in the UK to spend one week cycling through the islands to tell people about Jesus and hand out Christian literature. After an overnight ferry ride to reach the islands, the team prepared to set off to reach the unreached. And as far as we know, there are no Adventist members on the Shetlands. And how do you approach trying to make contacts? What would Paul and his associates do if they were doing a missionary journey and they landed in Lerwin and they were to start in the Shetland Islands? Maybe Paul also would have used a bicycle to share Jesus with people today. The team set out to ride through every inhabited street, stopping with anyone they met. Much like the Apostle Paul, Anthony and his team had to endure hardships in the form of wind, rain, and hills. It's, it's cold, it's cold, but this is still really good fun. And people's hearts are open. The weather's cold, but the people are warm. Praise God for that. This isn't the first I Will Go bike ride. Anthony has led a cycling ministry trip from Washington, D.C. to St. Louis, as well as some in Australia. What we found is it's a wonderful way to generate significant but brief conversations and an opportunity to share the gospel. So it's worked in the past and we, we thought we'd give it a go in Shetland. There's a special reason the Shetland Islands were chosen for this ride. A man named Philip Rieke emigrated from Scotland to Australia in the late 1800s. He rode his bike thousands of miles around Australia, sharing the gospel with anyone he rode past. One of those people happened to be Anthony Kent's great-great-grandfather. And Philip Rieke rode up to him on a bicycle and shared with him the great controversy, and it completely transformed his life. Now in our family, there are seven generations of Adventists as a result of Philip Rieke doing that wonderful ministry. And our dream was to take the spirit of Philip Rieke and his desire to, to lead people to Christ, to take it back to his homeland. Following Philip Rieke's legacy, the team took Jesus' call to go to the ends of the earth and applied it to their work in the Shetlands. We've literally gone from the very south of the Shetland Islands to Sambra, and we've gone all the way north as far as we can ride a bike, from sea to sea, in a sense. We haven't just stayed on the main roads. We've deliberately ridden past homes. We've seen people out and about, whether they're cutting their grass, putting their washing out, walking their dog, farming, working in the outdoors. We've gone to where people are available and we've had wonderful conversations with them. Although this is not the way they normally witness, they've seen the value of trying unique methods of ministry. We have here a group of pastors. They're not cyclists, but they're willing to go to the ends of the earth, even if it means riding a bike in wet, cold, windy conditions, if it may lead one person to Jesus. My dream is, is that people will look at unentered places, places where we don't have any followers, and do what you can do to reach them. Please pray for ministries such as the I Will Go Bike Ride and others around the world who are using unique methods of ministry to reach the unreached. Thank you for your support of mission. With these stories, we conclude this week's ANN News. Did you know the 70 Admins Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch other amazing videos? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. Leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. The text says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.